I am Bishop Paris de Taban, Bishop Emeritus of Catholic Diocese of Torit, the founder of the Holy Trinity Peace Village Quran. I was born in Opari in the Magui County, that is in the Torit State in 1936. And my father was actually working with the Greek merchants as a shopkeeper. And one of the strange things that one day he was implicated, somebody accused him that he took money. That's before I was conceived and was in prison. And uh, when my mother went to see her, him in prison, he saw that my mother was pregnant. He thought that I was the child of someone. And she beat my mother, kick the womb to abort the child. My mother prayed very hard, God, don't let the child to be aborted. Because to prove that I've not done anything wrong, God help. And I was not aborted. And when I was born, I was exactly like my father. The, the picture exactly of my father. Today, if you see me, you think that my father is still alive. And from that time, my father began respecting my mother. And because she found, he found that he was mistaken. Then my father was with other group in 1940, were sent to Katire to open a sawmill during the colonial time. The British brought people from all over Sudan, from Kosti to Nimule. Families were brought to open a new sawmill in Katire. Katire is about 36 miles eastern of Torit in Imotong Mountains. And that, that was the first sawmill in the south during colonial time. And there, we who grew there from all parts of Sudan, Muslim, Christian, of all denominations, there was no church. The priest had to come either from Torit or from other parts to pray there. And we who grew there went to any religion <laughs> when we were young. We respected all. We never knew what is called tribalism. And tribalism is one of the worst things which destroy the South Sudan because they divide and rule. So we who grew there young, we never knew tribalism. So when I finished my primary school in Katire, we were taken to lower mission school. We found that even the people of my tribe called me a foreigner. They called me a foreigner. So that's why I want to tell you now of this. In 1964, before I finished my theology in Torre, all the missionaries were expelled. And I was ordained immediately from Theology 4 and made a rector of the seminary to replace the rector of the minor seminary who was an Italian because all the missionaries were expelled in one day in February in 1964. And then in May 24, I was ordained and made director of the seminary. And that was the first challenge I had in my life. And the war started, the first war. And we were there with the children. Sometimes the soldiers used to come, try to attack to shoot us 
but they found that we were innocent. And one of the army men say, please move away from here. But before that, one of the priests were bringing food, a lyria before 40, 42 miles from Juba, the soldiers put some ammunition in the lorry of the father. The father was arrested. The father and myself were supposed to be killed. And we were in prison in Juba. And the war by then is started in the year 1965. Many intellectuals were killed in Juba. And many other people flee as refugees in Uganda and Kenya and so on. But we were in prison here. Then we had to call Abel Alier, uh, who was an advocate in Khartoum. Abel Alier one day became the president after the signing of the peace in 1972. So, as an advocate, what did he, he do? He asked the government to bring all the ammunition that they got in the car of the father. And they brought without shame. And to bring even all the uniform that were in the car of the father. They brought. When he studied, he found that because Nimeri was a socialist, his bullets were made in Russia. And for the, the Republic of Sudan, and all were written. And he asked, are there bullets stolen from the store of the government? Say no. And the uniform, we're all having the number of the Sudan army. Say, and the uniform, were they stolen? Say no. Say, these are all the property of government of Sudan. So then we were released from the prison and we remained with the people from 1965 until 1972, when Addis Ababa agreement was, re, uh, was signed. So until Addis Ababa agreement, we remained in the country serving the people, traveling in the whole Equatoria, 1965 to 69. There were only three priests <laughs> in Juba. The rest had to flee for their life. And uh, one day we wanted to get some priests back. Some missionaries say, you are getting with the priests back. What about the priests who were killed? Have you solved their problem? We said that, well, I don't know. Why, the, why is the Pope now in Rome? Have they solved the problem of St. Peter and Paul and the martyrs who were killed in Rome? We are here because of the people. Those cases we cannot solve. So we remain until, as I say, peace came in 1972. Then after that, we started live again. And another war started again in, from 1983. Then I was made the Bishop of Torit. <laughs> By then, in this war, many lives had been lost. And I have to found the new Sudan Council of Churches with the Bishop of Bor, Bishop Natalian Garan, an Anglican, to serve the people. The new Sudan Council of Churches became the hope of the people because the government was fighting the rebels have no food, so we had to serve the people in the area where the people are displaced. Like in the countryside, in the area of SPLA, we had to start serving the people. But every day bombardment. You see that sometimes I go to bomb shelter while the bombs are falling and calling BBC telling to BBC how people are bombed and how many people are bombed. Sometimes the BBC asks, Bishop Taban, are you with the SPLA? 
I say no. The SPLA are here with me, but I'm not with them. They are with me. They join me. I didn't join them. I'm not a rebel. So those are some of the stories. In 1988, the road was closed. I came from Rome. I found people were dying in Torit in massive grave people buried every day. I have to struggle as the government to send a convoy and I travel in that convoy with a relief food of nearly 100 vehicles. And the SPL, of course, were very angry. They were bombarding all these vehicles. 84 miles, we made it in more than one month. 84 miles. We started on the 31st of May and arrived to read on the 1st of July. And many of the vehicles were destroyed on the way, and many people were killed. I was burying people every day on the way. And uh, the SPR radio was saying that I was among those killed, but I, I arrived alive. And I found people were being killed. The bombs were there, both from the government and from the SPLA, sometimes shelling. We, by the grace of God, we managed with a little food out of 100, of over half of the vehicle destroyed on the road. And over 100 people wounded, 60 killed in that journey. And of course, at the end, in February, in 1999, then the SPLA 89, the SPLA took to read. And of course, Dr. John knew why we, the church, are there. But many thought that we were supporting the government. We were supposed to be killed, but he sent a battalion, protected us. We were taken prisoners of war in the bush. I had four priests with myself, four, three priests and myself. We were taken prisoners of war for 100 days, feeding on boiled maize. But we always say, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they do. We were suffering. We were, all our body produced lies, but we forgave. We say, these people, if we don't pray for them and forgive, tomorrow who will liberate the South Sudan? So we forget them. After 100 days, because of the pressure, international pressure, we were released. And we began serving the people. And being with the people, the Council of Churches, the New Sudan Council of Churches, formed a communal forum all over the world. We were going even up to Europe, America, lobbying for peace, up to New Zealand, out there, Australia, but always telling the people not to buy the oil because the oil money was used for killing innocent people. But we ask always forgiveness. And the church worked so hard until even the church was involved in EGAD, which brought the peace agreement, which was signed in 2000 and five. Actually, 2004, the peace which was signed in Naivasa, I was the one who said the prayer. And in 2005, I gave our bishop, the Cardinal of Khartoum, Zubair said the prayer. So the church was with the people, was a shepherd, and was there always advocating for nonviolence and especially development. Because the school, the hospital, even under the trees and so on, that brought life with the people. So in that way, the church has been a shepherd, 
has been with the people, for the people, always through their life. And of course, in 2004, I, desire, I decided to retire from the administration of the Dais of Torit to start the peace village. Because I said, we need peace. We need that the people of South Sudan forgive each other and find a small peace village like in Nabo Salaam in Israel. Because I went there twice. I found the Israelis, the Palestinians, the Muslim, the Christian. They live together in that cooperative village, like in Katire. So I want to duplicate another Katire. I want to duplicate another Nova Salam in South Sudan, where to bring community to learn, to live together, to live this way of tribalism, because that will cause people to continue fighting. So that's how I retired seven years before my age of retirement. So we, the Catholic bishops, retire at the age of 75, but I retired seven years before my age of retirement in order to find a peace village. In order that in Narus, where I had my new headquarter, when Torid was taken by the government of Khartoum, I had a school of children from 24 different tribes. And most were living under bomb shelter. When the plane bomb, they go underground. I made bomb shelter which could accommodate 1,000 children. But when the plane goes, they learn. And these 24 different tribes, some are now the peacemakers. Because the 24 different tribes live together as brothers and sisters. They love each other. They don't call themselves by tribe. They call themselves South Sudanese or Sudanese. So this is what I found it now in Kuron, where we bring different tribes who have conflict between each other, who call themselves enemy, to turn that they call themselves brothers. They call themselves sisters. They forgive each other. They are cattle raiders. But when they raid cattle, we made a community police to return the cattle of the other group. And if the other also raid, they return the other. So that is how the Kuron Peace Village. Now we want to make it a peace academy because I cannot spread that village everywhere in South Sudan. People had to come there and learn to go and live together. So it is going to be a place for learning to forget differences. Because we as human beings, we are all sons and daughters of one father in heaven, of Abraham, of Adam, and we are all the images of God. So that is, I want to tell you that I was a good hunter. I had a shotgun before the war. I had small gun for small animal, and I have also, because there were many animals like elephants, I had also 375 Magnum for elephant. When the war is start, I destroy all those guns, because I don't like that those guns can be used by somebody to kill a Sudanese, a South Sudanese. I destroyed it. And so this is what I want to say. We want now, it is an example. I got many awards from UN in Geneva, from Ban Ki-moon, and I got a, an award from the Archbishop of Canterbury. And in May 16, I got from Netherlands Kingdom. I got from uh, Roosevelt Ford Foundation, award for what? Worship. Most of the award is for respecting all type of religion in the world. The pictures are here, you can see. If you want to have a ripe old age, these are the eight secrets. Eat less, chew more. 
Drink less, breathe more. Preach less, talk less, act more. And then, waste less, save more. And then, go less, rest more. Frown less, smile more. When you smile towards a person, you enlighten that person. You have to smile more in order to give hope for this person. And you will see even a child, when he smiles, he begins to smile immediately. And that's the same, I talk with the children, it's a smile. If then you are weeping, then we have lost hope. We want you not to weep. Love is the best weapon that we have in this world. And to say, I am wrong, I am sorry, is no cowardice. Is courage, is his strength. And also, I have this principle that you have to make a change for people to live together. I have these 57 words love, joy, peace, patience, compassion, sympathy, kindness, truthfulness gentleness, self-control, humility, poverty, forgiveness, mercy, friendship, trust, unity, purity, faith, hope. I love you. I miss you. Thank you. I forgive. We forget. Together, I am wrong. I am sorry. Understanding, discernment, wisdom. If you are right, then you need not get angry. And if you are wrong, then you don't have any right to get angry. Patience with family is love. Patience with others is respect. Patience with yourself is confidence. Patience with God is faith. Never think hard about the past, it will bring tears. And never Think more about the future, it will bring fears. Live this moment with a smile, it will bring cheers. Every test in our life makes us bitter or better. Every problem breaks us or makes us. The choice is ours, whether we become victim or victorious. Beautiful things are not always good, but good things are always beautiful. And do you know why God created gaps between fingers? So that someone who is special to you come to fill those gaps by holding your head forever. True stories that can change your life. Real stories of real people who have gone through the most difficult circumstances in their lives, but they have experienced the power to forgive. Gisas hagigia, bagger gero hayataki, gisa tanas hagigin, umon mururu fizuruf sap, o hawadis tahaya, lakin umon wedishu huda, le gua tamusamaha. If you'd like to get a free copy of the book and audio device, Power to Forgive, you can call this toll free number 2222. Call now and get your free copy. Thank you.